Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, this is one of those iconic kind of characters that you've heard about ever since you were a kid. Tell me a little bit about taking on the role of Alice and if there was any trepidation on your part. Yeah, I mean, there's always a little bit of trepidation. I mean, especially when you're, you're dealing with a character that is so iconic and so beloved by so many people and so many generations. Um, but there's also a certain amount of... Um, you know, realism to it in that you know that you can't please everyone and not everyone's going to, to be pleased. So it's more just making the character your own and feeling comfortable in the decisions that you make. And, and that's really just what me and Tim decided very early on, that it was important um, for us to really just to make the character ours. Yeah. How did you do that? What sort of Alice can we expect to see in this film that maybe we haven't seen in the other adaptations or read about in the book? Well, in, in our story, Alice is 19, and she's returning to Wonderland for the first time since she was seven, and she doesn't have any recollection of, of that. But the way in which I identified with Alice was that she's um, you know, a young woman. She's 19. She's at that age that I'm at, um, where a lot of young women are also experiencing these um, pressures or um, expectations of society or family that is sort of uncomfortable in a way. And um, what I think is so great about Alice and in this story is it's her coming back to herself and finding herself again and also um, sort of being reassured that you have to do what's fulfilling for yourself and uh, you kind of have to be in control of that in your life and, and um, that's an important thing for young women to be reminded of. Do you think that you know, despite the sort of fantasy elements mm. of the movie and the yeah. rabbit, I'm just looking at the posters here, Mad Hatters and rabbits with watches and the whole thing, uh, that there is a, a universal kind of feel to it and maybe that's what's yeah. made the story so endure over yeah, yeah, so long? Yeah. I kind of don't believe in normal, you know, like nobody's normal. I mean, everybody's crazy in their own way. And so I think that, you know, although these are extreme characters and they're, you know, crazy, kind of mad characters, I think that that just makes them more identifiable and that people just uh, want to see these characters, understand these characters, love these characters, feel comfortable with these characters because they're, they're like everybody in this world who is, you know, kind of crazy. There's no normal, really. I mean, how do you define that? So... Well, they often say there's more people on the outside than there are on the exactly. inside. Exactly, which is why I think Tim is so perfect for this and why I think so many people uh, understand this. You know, Everybody feels like an outsider in their own world, more or less, or, or has at some time in their life. And, um, and so it's a very identifiable story. Absolutely. Mm. This is a, just physically shooting this much be much different than some of the films you've made recently. I think of Defiance. I think of the television show In Treatment. Oh, yeah. You know, you've been working, uh, doing much different kinds of things. I would assume a lot of this was shot against a green screen. I would assume that maybe you're not in the same scene sometimes when you're very small. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so tell me just a little bit about adjusting mm -hmm. from doing very realistic sort of dramas mm -hmm. like In Treatment yeah, yeah. to something like this. Yeah, well... You know, 90% of this film is green screen. And that's a really bizarre way to work. I mean, and I come from that background of very small independent films, sort of experimental work like in treatment, which was fantastic for me. And, um, and so coming to something like, like this is um, bizarre and, and crazy and weird. And, and I mean, the process in which it was made is very much emulates what Wonderland is like because so much of it doesn't make sense and so much of it is weird and comical and, and you're kind of going, what, the, what am I doing here? And, and Which is exactly what I think it's like for Alice in Wonderland. Um, so it was very appropriate, but at the same time it's hard and you have to bring a whole lot more energy and especially when you're acting with animated characters, I have no idea sort of what they're energy will be or how big they'll be or how small they'll be once they're animated so it's really about trusting the director and trusting Tim and I really felt like I could do that and I and, uh, felt like he could tell me to reel it in or to, to bring more out and, um, and just being confident with that and comfortable and not getting overwhelmed by it. Well, when you're working with animated characters like this, often you're working with someone like holding a broomstick with a yeah. face on it or something, right? Well, that's a lot what it was like. There was a lot of acting to either a cardboard cutout that's sort of standing at you like <laughs> this, or, or, or there's a, a tennis ball on the edge of a stick that they're kind of waving around, or, or sticky tape, or <laughs> the things that we acted to. If I could have taken a picture of my perspective each time, it would have made a really funny... Um, 
So it's really bizarre, but uh, yeah. But you're working with Tim Burton. Exactly. And so tell me a little bit about uh, Tim. I've met him a couple of times, yeah. and such a fascinating guy because mm. he's completely accessible mm. when you meet him personally, mm. but yeah. he is you know that there's more going on there than maybe than meets the eye. So tell me a little bit about working with him. Yeah, you definitely get a sense of that. Like, um, he's a lovely guy, really wonderful guy. And when you are working with him, he's completely there and he will help you in any way that he can. Or um, So he is extremely accessible to you as an actor. And, um, and his direction is very clear and simple, easy to understand. I feel a, a huge amount of trust from him, um, you know, and as I think all his actors would, from when they're cast, you, you feel very trusted, which is a really important thing. Um, and But then at the same time, you can see just the wheels are constantly turning in his head. He constantly has ideas. Things are always going on. And and um, and that what I think is so amazing about him is that he's actually created this whole visual language. The way that he articulates his you know feelings and, and ideas is through this visual la- language and style that he's developed. Uh, which so many people identify with, which is a real, uh, real talent, and it's, it's, he's like an artist in film. Well, he's one of those few directors that if you see 30 seconds of a clip mm-hmm. in yeah. a movie theater and you've walked in after the titles have played, mm-hmm. you can go, that's Tim Burton. Yeah, of course. Because I recognize the style or I recognize the kind of things that he would do. Yeah, he is very recognizable. Mm-hmm. And you were working with Johnny Depp as well. Mm-hmm. Now, the scenes, because you vary in size. So some of these scenes, you're, you're, not, walking, you're not actually working opposite him. Is that right. true? Or yeah. Well, for a lot of the film, Alice is three inches, or she's eight feet. Yeah. So, or she's on, on the Mad Hatter's hat, or on his shoulder, or in his pocket. So, so the filming was, in scenes like that, they were usually shot separately. Um, I would be, you know, shoot my stuff, and then... Johnny would shoot his, but it was just so great when we could actually do a scene when we were both the same size. Or, and they did develop, you know, a couple of techniques so that when we were different sizes, we could do the, the scenes together. Now, this is a, a big movie coming out. It's it's will likely be the biggest success of any movie that you've been in. I yeah. think it's fair to say. Yeah. Are you prepared for what's probably going to happen after this movie opens to your career and sort of personally? It's a different. World, it's yeah. like Alice going down the wonder yeah, yeah. down down the rabbit hole of it. Yeah, well, I don't really anticipate anything. I don't really, I'm not expecting anything, and I'm trying to I just take things as they come, one day at a time, um, and and that doesn't overwhelm me if I if I do it like that, which is good. And um, I think probably to a certain extent, I'm in denial as to about I don't really know what will happen, so we'll see. But yes, I feel I feel prepared or. It must be exciting. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's been a long process, so it's great that it's coming out. Yeah, how long a process? I mean, we, special effects films like this take a while. Yeah, it's it's almost been two years. I mean, I got the role when I was 18, and I'm now 20. Um, and the film was shot in 2008, at the end of 2008. So it's, um, so it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a long time. Well, congratulations Thank on it. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice lovely to meet you. To meet you. Yeah. Thank you.